Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we got another great Bolo show for you. Bolo, of course, if you don't know what that means, it is be on the lookout. This show comes out every Thursday night. We do it. It is pre-recorded, but we do that premiere on Thursday nights with that live chat to get that conversation going. And this covers first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, and a long-term play. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. But before we get into the list and get into the show, it is important to know that this show is brought to you by Nick Dortmund at SlabHeroes.com. If you're looking for modern comics at a guaranteed 9.8 at a guaranteed great price, make sure you check out SlabHeroes.com. And if you're looking to support the channel and get something in return, we also have our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simple Man's Comics. We have that high tier, that premium bolo tier that has that mystery mailbox in there for you. And we got Chuck Fuller. We got Frankie's Comics, who's another channel sponsor. We got some Slab Heroes, Nick Dortmund's Comics. He's got some of those raw, some of those exclusives that he's selling now. And we're getting other books put in that box as we keep working with other retailers and exclusives. We're talking about indie books. We're talking about a whole bunch of stuff, aren't we, Jack? Yeah, yeah, a lot of lot of big things planned for 2020. The Bolo Box program is all going to expand it. Not only did we have all of those great books and all of those great variants from our our partners and sponsors, we were also able to include some exclusive clothing items recently in Bolo Boxes, like the T-shirt with this graphic right here, the exclusive Carnage Simpleman's Comics uh, T-shirt we did, as well as the beanie that I'm wearing here, the Simpleman's Comics Winter Beanie. Um, we were able to include those to our Bolo Box Patreon customers. Um, so we got a lot of cool stuff, man, a lot more of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, a lot of cool collaborations coming in 2020. So we're just getting started, it's January. Right, and again, a link to that Patreon is in the description of this video, but enough about that. Let's do this week's Bolo list. We're bringing it up on the screen right now. As always, talk about first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, and then that long-term play. This list also is made up from a bunch of buzz on the social community between Instagram, Facebook, all over the internet, right, Jack? You're not just making this willy-nilly. Right, yeah. It's not just my list of what I think um, is relevant in those given categories. It's what I'm seeing posted throughout social, it seems like. People are talking about what others are viewing as relevant, um, and we try to capture that so we can discuss it. Um, and give a preparation tool for those who know yes, maybe you didn't prepare that week. Maybe you've kind of been out of it, you've been dealing with some family stuff or whatever it is. It's just giving you a tool to aid your comic buying experience on a new comic book day. Right, and we're going to get into it right now, starting with this week's first appearance. And first up on that first appearance list is that Avengers number 29, and we get what new star brand? <laughs> Right. So, you know, we don't have a true, in my mind, legit first appearance this week um, whatsoever, because this is the one in kind of current continuity of comics that we have. But, you, you know, it's kind of an old beef, me and teams, right? We haven't brought it up. It's, it's something we haven't talked about in a while, but I'm not a big uh, team first appearance guy. Um, even less when it's an unpopular one, even less when it's um, a, a rebooted cast with more popular characters. Um, not something that I really am interested in, but we'll have to pay attention because there seems to be a lot of talk on social media about it. To be honest with you, people seem to be at least excited about it in the moment. But 2019 was like the year of uh, first appearance every every week, every minute. Um, it's just because people are hyped about something this week doesn't mean they'll be hyped about it next week. It doesn't mean that prices will actually raise. Right. Not only was there a lot of first appearances in 2019, there's a lot of first appearances of new teams or rebuilt teams. Yes. Yes. But we're going to move right along. And then we're getting some first other first appearances. We're getting, that first appearance of Batgirl, I feel like I've seen this one before. That's because this is the facsimile edition of Detective Comics number 359. Look, I'm, when these facsimiles came out, people kind of laughed at them at first. Um, but they've become beloved in the community. They've been beloved by collectors. Retailers are doing well with them. Um, there, some of them have done well in the secondary market. Yes, there's a lot of scams that go on, um, but that usually gets corrected through the proper channels. Um, and the reality is that it gives a unique reading opportunity to the reader um, who gets a chance to not just read the book, right? But read the book with the classic advertisements, and, uh, you know, the exact kind of like almost look and feel without the paper. 
quality difference. Um, you know, but they, they have that experience, which is different than you usually get from a trade paperback or um, reprints of the past. So facsimiles are here to stay. Batgirl, obviously super relevant, cult popular character. Um, I think that, that she only has room to grow if the DC uh, cinematic universe gets going. Uh, so, you know, this is definitely a good one. I'm a classic book. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the facsimile editions. I like those over the true believers or as DC has those dollar the dollar books. And the facsimile edition to me is almost like a true replica. Minus, yeah. you know, a couple things usually like the price on the book. But it comes as close to being able to get a replica of that book at a very small fraction of the price and be able to kind of look at it and kind of get the feel of what the book was when it originally came out. Again, minus what you said, the paper quality is a lot better in the facsimile edition. Right. And speaking of those dollar books, the next one we have for first appearance is that dollar book for Batman Adventures number 12. This is the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Right. And, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting, actually. Um, I'm in your group where I don't put a lot of stock into dollar books dollar books the dollar versions of books they tend to be just for like fun read pass them along right um not something typically quite now there are ones that have spiked before and done well um this one that i'm hearing has a chance it's interesting um gotham city comics great comic shop on instagram uh they're very active in social media they've participated in our live chats um i know they've watched and consumed some of our content uh they actually do picks for key collector and pick this as their pick of the week, which I actually think is a unique uh, pick because there really haven't been a lot of reprints of this book. And it is a very costly book, and it is a book that is desired by many. And so I'm not surprised that it's getting this reprint treatment. Um, I think it could have been a facsimile instead of a dollar issue, but I still think they may do the facsimile approach at some point. But, uh, you know, I think because these facsimiles are happening, I almost wonder if maybe this book would get overlooked a little bit in the past. It would be hard for these books to pop because it's hard to overlook a dollar book, right? It's hard to have demand out with supply because the store is buying these for 50 cents each. You know, they can, they can buy stacks of them for very little money. But it is possible that the demand does outweigh supply on this book at some point. Right. And I was going to say almost just the opposite mm -hmm. when you said there's not many reprints. Because I'm surprised Batman Adventures number 12, the book itself, it wasn't a small print run by any means. But then right. I'll say, yeah, there wasn't a lot of blueprints from like DC specifically. I mean, it still yeah. came from DC, but was it a bunch of con? They had the yeah, there's a ton. 12 with all the different types of covers yeah. on it that's been put out a bunch of different times. And when I say there hasn't been a reprint, I mean one that's on the, the new release shelf yeah. that's accessible and, and cheap. Really, that's what it comes down to. It's cheap. All of those variants you speak of, which is true, there's a lot of them, they would be, they were released at like 20, 25, 30 yeah. bucks or more each. Yeah. And then what I was going to get at is it surprises me that through this dollar bent, this dollar book that just came out, through all those con variants or however you want to call it, those foils and different covers and different artists, um, homages, and how many times, how many copies of this book are actually out there in circulation or the story, I guess you'd say? that the original Batman Adventures number 12 still holds the value that it does because a lot of times when you see that, it really washes out, especially the more modern books, um, like the Lamole variants usually wash out, say the uh, Legion of Superheroes 23, still a great book, but you saw when that Lamole or some of those other variants that came out that kind of stole that cover, the, um, the Supergirl, the Dutch variant, right? They did a Lamole or there was a variant for that and it kind yeah. of drove the value down on that for a little bit. But Batman Adventures number 12 still seems to be, I won't say a blue chip key, but it's one of those books, Har Harley Quinn is such a popular character that I'm surprised that the book retains the value that it does with all these other books out there for it. It is scary to think about if you were to compare Amy Quinn to, say, an athlete, right? She's still kind of young in her career. <laughs> so as high as that book, as expensive as that book goes for, same with like a Deadpool, it's actually kind of crazy to think that like there's still so much that could happen that could spike that book yeah i'll be anxious thin. to see how the book is when it gets to like the age of the book we just talked about the facsimile before right. this one that tech 359 right 
Either way, still yeah. a great book. And for a buck, I mean, you can't beat it. Pick it up for the store. No, especially if absolutely not. Great way to get kids into the hobby also for a buck. But that's going to wrap up the first appearance section this week. So do us a favor. If you're watching this, click that thumbs up button for us. Let us know what you think about the first appearances. We realize that there are some facsimile. We realize there was one on the list that we haven't talked about yet, but we will talk about that later on. And with that being said, we're going to get into the reader buzz section for this week. And the first book we're talking about on the reader buzz section is The End Venom Number One. This is like that series of one shots that we're getting from multiple characters, right? And this one is for Venom. We've talked about on the last call show, like the Miles Morales one. Here we have the Venom itself, and there was some reader buzz around this book, correct? Yeah, there was. I mean, but there's reader buzz around everything Venom related. This one, I would say, is some of the smallest reader buzz I saw. I don't know. Um, I, full disclosure, I haven't read the end books yet. I'm excited to read them. Uh, I haven't read the Miles Morales one that already came out. Uh, I think it's a cool concept, something I think will just be fun and as a, kind of an offshoot from the typical stories. But I will say that, like, post Miles Morales coming out, um, I didn't hear any, like, increased buzz for this or some of the future stories. So it'll be interesting to see if that this whole kind of concept really uh, kind of penetrates at all. Or if the only place where I'm seeing this typically posted is your typical, like, symbiote uh, fans and things like that. Right. And I'm actually surprised there wasn't a bunch more covers than there were for this book. Mm Mm-hmm. But speaking of a bunch more covers, the next book to talk about seemed to be like one of the big Marvel books this week, and that's that Iron Man 2020 number one. I just picked the cover A and then a couple of the variants, the higher ratio variants. There was something like 20 covers for this from Marvel. Right. Yeah, and I've never been into Arno Stark, to be honest with you. Um, Machine Man number two is a book I've been used to seeing in dollar bins. Uh, and, you know, I think that if you were like an investor, you know, a reseller, now would be the time to sell those Machine Man 2s because I think it's not going to be hotter than the release of this series, which is the whole reason that the book spiked in the first place. Um, after issue number one, it's like an indie series. It'll be less important. But this one really, um, it had that reader buzz, but I've actually seen since the day has gone on more talk of some of the variant covers, um, whether it was the Hidden Gem or the in Yuckley, or um, that, like, I think it's the gear variant is supposed to be essentially like a blank variant. Yeah. It reminds it reminds me of, like, the stone variant that came with a Conan Serpent War. Um, it's also high ratio. Um, I think it's like 1 in 200. But there's been a lot of people posting those various variants. But um, and, and if you're looking for any of these uh, high ratio Tony Stark uh, or, or Iron Man 2020s, um, Slab Heroes, our, our show sponsor, they have actually had some Instagram posts today with some link that would allow you to buy those both, I think, graded and ungraded. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, he's definitely got a lot of great books, especially for New Comic Book Day this week. He also, at SlabHeroes.com, will post FOC books Friday night. So if you're looking for stuff, especially that we talk about on the last call show, definitely check out SlabHeroes.com, as well as our other channel sponsor, Frankie's comics. He's yep. got a lot of books up there, especially if you're looking at those store exclusives. But the next one we want to talk about in Reader Buzz is He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse number three. This is like one of my favorite franchises. This is one of my favorite series to read. But to be honest, I haven't had a chance to read issue number three yet. Yeah, I haven't read three yet either. Um, it was actually a book I was going to keep off of the list. I hadn't seen much talk of it. Um, it. I always have to check myself. Like, is this a book that I like or is this a book that people are talking about? If it's a book that I like more than it's a book people are truly talking about, that's when I put it in that long-term play. Um, but then the, I started to see more and more excitement. And you get this from the readers. There are a lot of readers, and I keep hearing the same thing. I and mean, it's a lot that reminds me of what's going on with Power Rangers right now, um, where I'm hearing a lot of people say, you know, I never have been a He-Man fan, or I've never read He-Man, or I've never watched the cartoons, but I'm really liking this series because, you know, whether they watched our show or they watched any other YouTube programming um, or they read any website, this series, from a true reader perspective, has been universally liked. Um, it's it's Spider-Verse type of fun. 
um, within the He-Man universe. So, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me that we're on issue three, and I think all three issues have been reader buzz. Um, the He-Man faithful will have to work to keep it going uh, through the end of this series, but because it, it's definitely kind of, it fades like anything else, but uh, definitely enough to lay it on the list. There were definitely a lot of people talking about it. It was a lot of people's kind of like must-read lists um, for this week, and it was a light week, which I think aided it a bit, too. If anything, Master of the Universe, I might end up picking up. And I've enjoyed the story so far. And I'm glad other people are enjoying it, too. I enjoy it because it's old characters, but the new story and bringing kind of yeah. everyone together. Like you get normally see in those DC multiverse or Marvel, like the big crossover event type book. And here you're seeing it with the smaller, I won't say smaller franchise, but not one you see as obvious. And if they usually use Master of the Universe, it's usually teaming up with a bigger well-known Justice League or uh, Injustice or Thundercats. And here you're seeing it all self-contained in the Masters of the Universe. That's what I like about it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely cool. You gotta love the Inyakuli covers as well. Yeah. And then about the reader buzz is that Ruins of Ravencroft Sabretooth number one. Both of these covers so actually sold at Midtown. Um, seems like everybody wanted to read this book. I don't necessarily think it's it's going to do anything on the secondary market. Um, I think there will probably, there's, if I had to guess, there's probably leftover copies at Diamond. Um, I doubt it was like a true, true, true sellout. Um, but I think that the point is that people were very interested to read this book. People wanted to pick it up, wanted to check it out. Um, and I think that bodes well for this whole Ravencroft program that Marvel's getting into. We talk about it all the time, man. Horror's hot. These horror stories are doing well. If you can tell a good story, you can integrate in some of these superhero characters. People are going to want to be on board for that. And there's so much of this this Ravencroft um, con 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 concept uh, as far as the facility. I think it, it there's a lot that can be covered there because Arkham Asylum has been such a majorly important part of... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Arkham Asylum has been such a majorly important part of uh, the uh, DC Comics lore, and I think that you know they can do the same with Ravencroft and Marvel, and really kind of give some context to a lot of characters, uh, especially one like Sabretooth, who kind of has been, if we're talking in terms of three up, three down, has been down for a long time. Then the next book we're going to talk about is. Spawn number 304. Spawn keeps going on and on. And there's some great covers for this as well. Yeah, we're talking about He-Man Masters of the Multiverse. This is another one where the readers are not letting the buzz die down. We walked into this with the lead up to 300. We expected those issues to buzz. What has been a pleasant surprise has been the kind of post-300 heat due to kind of this new team that Spawn has created. Now, there were some rumors of a new villain appearing in this issue. I really don't know if it does. Um, it hasn't been a strong buzz today about it. Um, so let us know in the comment section if you got a chance to read this. And, and was there something to be looked at for the future here? Uh, cover A is Matina. That's the one I tend to be drawn to. Cover B is the classic McFarlane. Um, and obviously, cover C is that black and white version of the McFarlane cover. Um, it would be interesting to see how long this streak of Spawn showing up on the list can, can go. I have a feeling where it may be winding down. Uh, again, this is a lighter week, so this was an a easier week to break in. But it'll, it'll be interesting to see if Spawn lines up against some major releases. It, the, the streak may end, but an amazing one because it's at like seven or eight months. Yeah, and that is until like movie news comes back up again or whatever. Right. Then the last one we talk about in the reader buzz is from IDW, and that's Rising Sun number one. This had the cover A, and then also had the one in 10 incentive, which is what you see on the right. Yeah, and this was one that kind of got postponed a couple times when we were doing um, the FOC stuff for Last Call Show. Uh, you know, I think um, this is a video game property. I think IDW had high hopes for it. I don't know if they got the orders initially that they wanted, so they kind of extended the window. I would imagine that that was the reason for it. But um, I didn't know we were originally talking about, like, what is, you know, the popularity of this property? Like, is, it, is, is there a following here? Um, is this something that will catch on? But the art is very cool. 
um, these types of stories, this genre type of story, this samurai kind of fantasy type story, has done traditionally very well. It actually was looking very good for pre-sales. The so 1 in 10 was doing like $25, down to about $13, $14. Now, that's still the ratio, and I think sometimes people get confused with it. If you were to take a 1 in 25 book and it'd be 30% over ratio, um, and you were, say, sitting there at like $31, $32 level, people would be like, man, that, that book's doing really well. Uh, on release date, and I don't think the IDW books sometimes at the lower ratios get that credit when they're doing $13, $14. I think that's still pretty good. That still goes well for the future. But um, the key is going to be, are people reading this series? Will they continue to read this series beyond issue one? Yeah, definitely. This is one that I had in my pull list and picked up, but I, again, haven't had a chance to read it yet. But yeah, if you've read it, let us know in the comments what you think of this book. And that wraps up the reader buzz section so we're gonna go right now into what everyone loves to talk about it seems and that is the variants with the variant buzz section then the first one we're gonna talk about on the variant buzz is that marvel action avengers number nine this is another one that those marvel action books from idw this is the one in ten and cinema variant for that right yeah, one in ten said that um, we saw with the Venom that popped with Spider Man because of a reason that just right made sense. Um, low printed Spider Man book uh, featuring Venom, those are always popular, right? This made less sense. This, I think, had less people's attention. Um, but this was one I started to see about two days before. And I, you know why, Brian? And this is another classic situation that didn't work out for. Um, Solicitations get put out all the time, and there's no cover on the reach, right? And that makes it really tough on retailers. Imagine being a retailer, put yourself in your shoes, and you're sitting there, and you've got to place orders for a book, and you don't know the art of what that incentive is, right? So you're just looking at Marvel Action Avengers number nine and all these titles, um, and you're probably just ordering a few for your wall. So there's not a ton of incentives for this book out there. But then, you get a very timely variant like this. Black Widow, um, obviously there's trailers dropping, movies coming. They just had a uh, new this, trailer for the college football championship that aired. Right, and this has kind of a Jen Bartel feel. It's very cool that it's just her. It's a good, um, kind of just solid depiction of it. And what ends up happening is you have a situation where it gets a little bit of attention. Somebody starts posting on social media. Another person post it, people start to pay attention to it. And this is what really happened with this book. So over about the last day or so, we started seeing an increase in attention in this book. And this book is going for about $30. So you're talking three times ratio, probably about the equivalent of say, Marvel Action of Spider-Man 12, or maybe even 11. Um, the most, the least... more than any Black Widow book has gone for lately. Right, so um, when I, when I went to Midtown, when I first started seeing people posting, um, I went to Midtown, and they they still had the blacked out. They didn't have the cover image, so it was still available. It was still the deal was you know this wasn't a difficult get if you were able to get it before that cover image got posted. Once that happened, that's when the, the book started to dry out, um, and you start. But it, this one was getting twenty dollars on eBay from the get go. Right, it's funny how you mentioned when you're talking about the ordering it and not seeing the picture of it. You had just something recently with last week's final order cutoff where that we talked about Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. There was a B cover for that cover I wasn't shown. And then just within this week, DC changed the actual variant artist on that. I want to say it was an Arthur Adams or I forget what the original B cover was for. And now it's a Derek Chu cover. Last yeah. Call's passed. And that Derek Chu cover, if you like Derek Chu, I mean, that, that's one of those gorgeous covers. I still love the art, but still not keen on that book by itself. But if... No, but I think that book has a shot, though, because when I saw the cover, I was like, wow, that's not the cover. It's not my favorite art style as well. But I, you know, I immediately was like, wow, yeah, that's a, that's a knockout. Um, and then... You go and think, you go, man, you know, Art Adams is awesome, right? He's kind of old school style. I don't think he's the type of name that draws orders. 
So I started sitting there going, man, I wonder how many, um, th th there could be a shortage of that. Yeah. So moving on into the variant buzz, we're going to talk about, this is Red Mother number one, and this is the third printing for it. We've talked about these negative space type variants before. We've talked about these other printings having different covers, not reusing the same covers that have some good things going for it. But Red Mother, great story. But we also talked about in 3 Up, 3 Down this week how some of these recent ND series have kind of, they're on the cold. Either way, I love this cover and I still love this story. Yeah, um, to be honest with you, I think this is genius. This is another example of Boom Studios kind of getting it right. These negatives, you mentioned that these negative space covers are popular, right? Well, yeah, they absolutely are. And right in the midst of the popularity, boom drops one. And this is what they do really well. They pay attention to the market. They pay attention to what is finding success. And they bring it into what they do, um, whether it's secret variants, whether it's one per store variants, um, whether it's late printings with alternate cover changes. Uh, they do a really good job staying on top of things. So it's funny. I, I really said that I think that the second print is a good long-term book to look at. And I still believe that this third print is just really cool cover art. Yeah, I remember the um, first person that I was aware to do it a lot was John Tyler Christopher with his store mm -hmm. exclusives or his website exclusives. He's seen some other people do some, um, Frankie's had one for, what was it? Um, was it new mutants recently? Well, Marvel had Mar one. I think Frankie's had Marauders. One. Yeah. But you, you're starting to see a lot of it now. And I'm, I'm just wondering if other artists look at it and, and appreciate it as well, or if they're kind of like how people are within comic book talk in general, where they get all snooty about it and be like, well, I did it first, or I talked about yeah, it first. This yeah. is my cover. But either way, great cover. And yeah, like I said, I still love this story. But keeping with Red Mother, we're going to talk about Red Mother number two had a secret variant. And the picture on the screen is from Ross Ritchie, CEO of Boom. This is his picture showing on the screen. Yeah, you and I both reposted it, right? So we tried to let people know that this was going to be happening, similar to with issue number one, um, which I think is very cool. Just another added incentive for retailers, right? They were at, at about a one in 10 ratio. Anytime you do these secret variants and they're, they're announced late like this, there's, they're probably going to land on the variant buzz section because people passing along that information inherently creates that buzz. Um, and that's what happened with this. So... Um, you know, from a typical, smart on issue number two, especially because on a typical resale perspective, obviously issue number two wouldn't be an issue that you would traditionally think that the flippers out there would be paying attention to. They would grab issue number one. Now let leave issue number two to us readers who really love this series. I've, I've said it before. I've gone on record. I, this, I really like this series so far. It's, it's early. You know, you can't, you know, you can't get married to it. You know, we're, we're only a couple of dates in, but at the same point, I'm, I'm really liking how this is going. Um, but I think that there's always, you know, this provides that cool chase for somebody to be like, oh, you know, I wasn't going to grab this, but there's the red cover. I'll go ahead and grab that for cover price. So shout out to the stores who leave those as chases on the shelf for cover price rather than marking them up um, or those who hook up their, you know, regular customers. Yeah, I like the secret variant because like you said, it also kind of makes it more, a little bit more accessible than just normal boom doing like, a one per store thank you variant and it's kind of like an easter egg if people aren't aware of it to something to look for and might be issue two but great story and you also kind of sometimes judge by the body of the work of the author and jeremy Hahn, one of my favorite series from him was the realm from image i love that to death and this kind of isn't the same but has you know the parallel writing style that i come to enjoy so two issues in but i'm in it for the the long haul yep next book we're going to talk about is marvel tales this is ravencroft again this is the one in 50 virgin and hyuk lee variant right yeah and remember when these uh virgin variants you know they seemed like every one of these marvel tales was money maker and then that died out um around when jen bartell was doing them now in Yuck Lee's been doing them and slowly they've kind of grown back to that. This book has solidly been selling for about $130. But again, it's important to remember that a retailer, these books are expensive, the cover price for these books. So a retailer has to spend 
like two hundred dollars to even qualify to get one of these. So even at selling this book for one hundred and thirty dollars, it's still in a hole, like seventy dollars that they've got to get out of their fifty copies of the trade dress version. Now, if they have a big enough readership, they should. This is a book again. It's a Ravencroft book. It does reprint and retell stories, so it's retelling the first appearance of. Um, of uh, Red Goblin, which is obviously a cheap thing you could buy on your own. Uh, but let's be honest, man, Red Goblin is just popular. Stuff with him on it does well, gets out of attention. Um, so I was actually surprised by the number of $10 uh, trade dress version sales I saw on eBay. There was uh, several of those today. So uh, I think anything Red Goblin is going to do pretty well for the time being. Yeah, I think Red Goblin's definitely a, a volatile character within the comic community. Um, there was a huge uproar. I won't say uproar, but had a lot of attention, what, a year or two ago. Kind of fizzled out, and then you start seeing um, teasing of the character coming back. But either way, fantastic cover. And Hyak Lee, I mean, he's doing great covers. When you're talking about how his virgin variants, whether there's those future fight variants he's done, they're, if you're not paying attention to those, so there's some of those that have definitely gone up in value since they've come out. Yeah, four or five, six hundred dollars from talking. <laughs> Just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But the next one we're talking about on the very buzz is that Glover's baby face number three. This is the uh, Catherine Nodet variant, right? Is it Cat? Right. Yeah, Cat Nodet again. Um, and you'll notice kind of a trend on this list this week. Um, very IDW centric. And I honestly could have added another one. I could have added Rom Dyer Raths. I actually feel bad for a race. Uh, for, for, for feel bad for how many people um, posted that book, and I and I didn't include it. Um, there was probably enough to constitute some solid reader buzz on that one. But this one, people are onto us, Brian. We, we knew as soon as this series got announced. Um, and we saw the noted variants. We were like, these are going to do well because Glow vs. Babyface isn't going to get paid attention to. You and I pay attention to it because we're wrestling fans. Um, we both like the series Glow. So I'm going to read anything that's an extension of that television series. But here you come with these noted variants, and we know what the, her, she previously was able to do on Amber Blake coming in here um, I'm not surprised that these have done well. I'm not surprised that these have been multiple times ratio. Um, and I don't see retailers like catching on and, and ordering more. So we're keeping a consistent, you're not getting rich off these, but they're consistently doing well. Yeah. I think it's one of those, um, series that we say not catching on. I think they're kind of aware, but at the same time, that's not worth the risk. So, okay, let me up my order. Because you never know yeah. when, poof, <laughs> the desirability for it. But, yeah, as long as Nodet's doing the variants for it, I think there's going to be popularity there. Just from the cover art alone, much less wrestling fan and glow and, and, and the creative team on this book. But Right. Yeah, and I think it's there's no surprise with this character on the cover, um, who maybe isn't one of the most fan-favorite characters, um, for this one to be going for less than the previous ones. I think some people may say, like, you know, I could see somebody in the comments retorting what I'm saying and say, well, they are catching on. That's why this was down to 20. I honestly think this is a character cover issue. Um, if they come with another character, uh, you know, it's, it's a little easier. The first two are two of the more uh, known for being attractive characters. So we'll have to see what goes on further on down the line. Yeah, full disclosure, I just hit the button a little bit early. <laughs> On this cover, I had <laughs> prepared now. I was like, well, it's there now. But the next one we're talking about is that Marvel Spider Man. This is that Black Cat Strikes. This is that one in 50 J. Scott Campbell variant. Now, yep. J. Scott Campbell and incentive variants alone usually kind of there's a steady demand for those, right? But right. from the one in 50 C's done, or just even like the regular covers done, I'm not a big fan of the cover art for this one compared to some of the art that he's done before. Yeah, I also think that the trade dress um, minimizes this one a bit. Um, it's definitely under the radar at the same point. Um, it's a book that was talked about and sold out at a lot of big retailers. Um, 
It's not a book that's going to be high printed, though. Yeah. Uh, they, this book was sold to retailers using the variant cover art because there's a um, Adi Granoff variant and a J. Scott Campbell variant. There's probably so much stock um, J. Scott Campbell, Black Cat, and, uh, and Spider-Man imaging. All they had to do was recolor the Spidey suit um for the gamer verse uh, this was probably a simple thing but this is one brian i i what you're saying i don't love this one either but i can see this one gaining over time well because... i'll say the one thing i do like is it's, i'm a huge i love the gamer verse books mm -hmm. but other than that just the normal j scott campbell art i've seen better but i i agree with kind of what you're saying where it's gonna be one of those ones that's like sneaky and next thing you know you, it's gonna be the one that raises in value, and I'm just going to be like, I don't see it. But, yeah, I mean, like, there's not a lot of – it's hard to find sales on this book because there's so many um, – such a long title. People are titling it differently. Yeah. But, I mean, I've seen it go for, like, 100 bucks, um, And I can see it even grow and be one of those three or $400 variants. As much as I agree with what you're saying, that I don't like it, there's so many J. Scott Campbell fans, and they, they are completionists. Yeah. And this can't be like crazy accessible. I can't imagine a ton of stores were out there ordering, you know, Spider-Man Black Cat strikes from the game reverse number one. Let me get 50 copies. Let me throw down, you know, a uh, hundred plus dollars on this book. I, I can't see that. Yeah. Double down, make it 200. I know I'm going to sell them bitches. Yeah. And you know what the truth is? If you're looking at the, the where that variant is, it probably would have been a smart choice. It probably would have made your money. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is one of those ones that if you didn't see the art, you just saw the artist's name, people would be like, well, I'm definitely getting that. Or especially if they're the yeah. same mind man, same mind frame as us, but they're going, hey, this is a book that I don't see too many people probably trying to get. And it's got a high uh, in-demand artist doing the variant for it. You know the covers are usually good. I'm going to go ahead and, and go with it. So if they did that, kudos to them. Yeah. That wraps up the variant buzz. The only thing left now is your long-term play, Jack. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. And we're going to bring in Jack's long-term play, and it's the one book that we haven't talked about this week. And it's the one book that probably had a lot of, I won't say controversy, but got some giggles when people saw the bullet, especially with your little emoji on it. But it is that Hulk, Incredible Hulk 180 facsimile edition. But yeah, and you know, and I meant it tongue in cheek. Uh, I obviously I'm aware. Before we get into anything, the market's chosen 181. I throw all that. Um, do I believe the market can change? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, I do. I, I do think anything can change. Um, I think that every at some point, every comic book fan alive today will no longer be on this earth, and there'll be a whole new breed of comic book fans, and what the way they look at things could be completely different. Um, Either way, this is the long-term play of the week. And it, no doubt, I'll admit, comes on a week where there isn't a lot to look at from a future investment perspective. Um, and with long-term play, I like to think outside the box. Uh, it's very easy to kind of pick whatever the hot book of the week is that you know is going to be hot and say, well, that's the long-term play. I'm trying with this segment to get people to look at things differently. So why, that's why I'm talking about this book. Um, Hulk 181 is a classic, but it is a book that is so classic, it has been done to death. There is a million Hulk 181 homages out there. Um, speaking of which, shout out to our sponsor, Rankies Comics, who's got a, a dope new one from Tyler Kirkham um, for Wolverine number one. It's got my man Omega Red in the background. But uh, there's a ton of homages for Hulk 181. Never seen anybody homage Hulk 180. If anybody ever does that, you're stealing my idea, but somebody's got to do it at some point. Um, the Hulk 180 has been a book that we have talked about quietly, um, that always had some level of importance, but it was kind of placed in the that cameo category. And over really the last two years has seen an increase in popularity to the point that growth of Hulk 180 is greater than the growth of Hulk 181. Now, that's not to say Hulk 180 is bigger than Hulk 181. It's not not even by you know, a, a, a long stretch. It's not even close. But the growth of this book has been exponential over the last few years. As more and more people who are new to the hobby have looked at it and looked at it from an objective perspective and said, well, you know, the character really does show up here first. Um, and 
I I want this book because of that. Even if they own Hulk 181, they still want Hulk 180. And that's causing Hulk 180 to continuously be bought. A lot of Hulk 180 owners who didn't have one, a Hulk 181 owners who didn't have 180 have gone back and bought 180. Um, and again, throughout this time period, Hulk 181 has been marketed as the first appearance. It's been the book that's been reprinted through like, like the Marvel masterpieces. Um, it's been the book, but there's also that dual history of trading cards and Marvel handbooks listing Hulk 180 as the first appearance. So there's always that split. But throughout time, this book has really only been reprinted in comic book form one time, in that Hulk vs. Wolverine one-shot from the 90s. Um, and that told the whole story. That was Hulk 180, Hulk 81, Hulk 182. Um, so I look at this being, we talked about the facsimiles and the reprinting and the, the feel and nostalgia and all that. We've talked about reprints becoming popular when the first print really reaches astronomical pricing. Hulk 180 has reached Hulk 181 five years ago prices. I think that that hasn't really registered with people yet. And I could be a little off a couple of years, maybe seven years ago prices, something like that. But, you know, speaking, you know, with as little hyperbole as possible, it's really reached a level where 181 was several years ago, but yet has far less offshoot products, um, being that it literally has none. And if you were just shunning Hulk 180 and now you want one, um, but you're of a certain comic budget, that book is now a legit key. I mean, it is a legitimate, I see um, the biggest retailers in the, in the country and in the world posting you know, they're like classic key pickups, right? When they're showing their Avengers number fours and their Journey into Mystery 83s, they're showing Hulk 180s. Um, so this book is at this point, it is a top level, A level key issue. So it, it should have a facsimile edition. Um, and, it, and it's great that Marvel did this. But you also then have to look at it and go, well, how did Hulk 181 do in facsimile? Well, it did so well that that book regularly can sell for like 10 to $12 at like conventions. Um, it has eBay sales above cover price at like eight to 10. Uh, and it was heavily printed. Every store knew you like, this is a no brainer. You load up on Hulk 181. This is the first chance we get to stack a shelf with this book and make it accessible. Stores did store exclusive stores did blank variants stores did new covers. Um, and the book was everywhere. Hulk 180 drops today. There's no store exclusives. Um, you're not seeing images of stores bragging about having, you know, hundreds in stock. Oh, I wish this was, you know, 19 whatever when this came out and, you know, I could have had this many copies. You're not seeing those posts. So I think that this book is going to be much smaller printed. Now, again, it's not a short-term play. I don't expect this to be a $20 book next weekend. What I do expect, contingent on Marvel not ODing and like producing this book in every form and facet imaginable over the next few years, I do expect this book to dry up, to not be available. And as long as Hulk 180, the original, continues to soar in pricing, I believe this book will have its purpose. I believe it will be important. Um, and I believe it will be in demand. And I can easily see this book. Remember, a $3.99 book that you could have pre-ordered if you pre-ordered it at FOC, probably in the $2 and something cents category, but at the very least $3 and some low change. Um, easily going for $15 to $20 um, down the road without any shadow of a doubt. Um, and I think it'll make a beautiful 9.8 as well. Um, Brian, I know you've got that Hulk 181 uh, facsimile 98. You need that 180 to go with it. And then the cool thing is, another book coming out later is they're doing the Hulk 182 facsimile, which I think will be even lower printed, um, but has a less of a reason for demand. But I think that set over time is going to be in demand, getting that 180, 181, and 182 um, facsimile set. So, uh, you know, in a, in a light week like this, uh, surveying this list and looking to see where there's meat on the bone. No matter what side of the 180 or 181 debate you sit, or how ridiculous you even think that argument is, or how tired of that argument you are, you cannot deny that it has been a polarizing topic in 2019, and that's why, starting off in 2020, this facsimile has a great chance long term. 
Yeah, 180, 181. I mean, I don't care much for either of them because I think Wolverine's just one big pussy. But, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yeah, I do have the 98, 181 facsimile, at, and I have the 180, uh, 98 ordered. But do you do you think maybe since this is like the first time it's reprinted and it's your long term play, could you see it something? I mean, it's generation different, but those golden record reprints that you see from back in the day for like journey to mystery 83, um, some of those other books, do you see it maybe possibly having the potential to be something like that value wise? It's not, it's not impossible. Like I said, that's where it all depends on what Marvel does. Um, if Hulk 180 continues to be, have more and more people in the camp of defiantly saying this she Hulk's first appearance and we need to relook at first appearances, which People can hate that crowd, but that crowd exists and is very loud on social media. Um, if that continues to increase and snowball, uh, and then they don't print this up in like a dollar bin version, or I maybe mean, if they do, if they don't just if they, if they don't OD printing this book out um, in different versions, if, if stores don't go back and create second print um, variants or anything like that, um, yeah, it's possible. Certainly, because I think that this book has a chance to be the only real reprint of this book in standalone format, um, where it's not as part of a trade or a kind of a tie pack like that whole first Wolverine book from the nineties. So I do, I do think that it is possible. But um, you know, anything Marvel gets success with, they always find a way to, you know, milk that cow one more time. Yeah. Also, I want to know how many people out there have bought Hulk one eighty. And Hulk 181 refrigerator magnets, thinking they're getting a good deal on a book. Because <laughs> I've almost done that a couple times. But either way, that's Jack's long term play for this week. I also want to take this time. We've talked about Nick at Slapped Heroes, but I also want to thank our channel sponsor, uh, Frankie's Comics. Check them out if you guys like, they have some great like, store exclusives. Um, we get some of those, we put those in those bolo boxes. But he's got stuff going up there all the time. And he also has. Not just store exclusives, but he has incentive, race, um, incentive variants as well and, and raw books. And same as SlabHeroes.com. He doesn't just sell graded books. He also has some raw books. And he's getting his own store exclusive. So big shout out and thank you to the show sponsor, Slab Heroes, and then also the channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. Bravo. Also, we have some great content coming up on this channel. Morbius trailer dropped. But we also have some content related around the Morbius character, don't we, Jack? That's right. We've got a back issue bolo that will be hitting the channel very soon uh, with the top five Morbius books to chase. But that's not all. That is only part one of a five-part series. We're going to be hitting you with about 23 to 25 Morbius books that you should keep an eye out for, ranging everything from those mega keys down to those dollar bin finds and everything in between modern to vintage. So be on the lookout for those videos hitting the channel soon. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you're notified when we drop those videos because uh, they can happen at any time between now and when that movie's released on July 31st. So there it is, guys. There is the Bolo Show for this evening. Thanks for everyone that's watching. Thanks for everyone that's in the live chat. Thank you for those that are listening to this on the podcast version. With that being said, this is Jack the Brown with Superman's Comics, and we'll see you guys in the next video.